Are you looking to branch out and become more adventurous in your wine selection, but don't quite know how to start? Well, not to worry, because you and I are going wine shopping together. Learn more about those obscure grapes and wine regions where you can find a sensational bottle of wine for criminally low prices. Let's get started exploring and tasting new wines together. Alrighty, today we are going to get more familiar with one of my very favorites, but also one of the most misunderstood styles of wine out there, and that is sherry. You have been lied to about sherry. I blame Fraser, but most sherries are actually not gonna be sweet. There's a huge range of different styles of sherry, and most are actually bone dry. And that range and diversity and complexity of the wines also makes it one of the greatest food pairing wines on the planet. I picked up this bottle of sherry, a dry style called Fino at Trader Joe's for only $5.99. So it makes it a really affordable way to be a little more adventurous and playful in your wine purchasing decisions. So let's learn a little bit more about sherry. We are going to jet off to Spain, to the southwestern region of Andalusia, and then let's zoom in to the city of Jerez de la Frontera. So this is a city where a lot of Sherry's very famous open air wineries, known as bodegas, are located. And it's surrounded by the vineyards planted to Sherry's different grapes. In the case of Fino, it's the Palomino grape. It's a very sunny area, hot, has very unique white, chalky, hard soils. And there is some humidity as well because of its proximity to the coast. And this makes it all the perfect place to make this very unique wine, Sherry. And speaking of unique, there's something really cool that's happening in Fino barrels, and that thing is called Flor. So Flor is a thick layer of yeast that sits on top of the sherry as it ages in barrel. It protects it from oxygen exposure, but it also adds some really cool, unique, nutty characteristics. You'll also see Flor in a style called Manzanilla, and also a little bit in a style called Amontillado. Let's get back to those barrels because there's another unique thing happening with that. So the barrels in a sherry bodega are all stacked up in a big pyramid. That bottom layer is where the sherry is pulled off to put in bottle. And then the layer on top of that, they take some wine out of there to top off the bottom layer. Then they take off sherry from that other top layer down to the next one. So it all trickles down with the youngest wine going in at the very top of the solera of the pyramid. So when you get that bottom layer of the solera that's going into your bottle of sherry, you're getting a really unique, complex blend of many different ages of different wines. It's pretty, pretty neat, right? Sherry is a fortified wine. This means it gets the addition of grape brandy added to those base wines, which spikes the alcohol content of the finished wine. And it also halts fermentation. In the case of Fino, and also in that Manzanilla style, they don't really want the alcohol content to go above 15% because then that kills that beautiful, delicious layer of floor, which is part of what makes this wine so unique. In other styles, like a style called Oloroso, they do elevate that alcohol level a bit. It gets no floor, none of that yeast. So it is exposed to more oxygen, which just produces a richer, nuttier, while still dry expression of sherry. Fortification was extremely important in the history of making sherry. Sherry was a very popular export to England in the 15th, 16th centuries. It was also exported from Spain to its colonies in the Caribbean and in North America. And that fortification acted as a preservative to protect the wine from spoiling. Which also means today, this wine is gonna last a lot longer than your typical unfortified wine. So after opening, this baby can sit in your fridge for two, maybe even three months, which is a lot longer than your typical bottle of wine, right? Because it's fortified and also because it has such intense flavors and aromas, it's typically poured in only two to three ounce pours, so about half of your typical wine glass. Speaking of glasses, let's get to know our sherry a little bit more. It's this beautiful golden color. So in the sherry styles that do get more oxidation, that don't have that floor, they're gonna be much deeper in color. This is nice and pale. Manzanilla, that other style that sees floor, is also on the nice pale side. So for those of you who have never smelled or tasted sherry before, I'm so jealous because it's such a cool experience. It's nothing like you've ever smelled before. You can smell that yeastiness, that nuttiness, that 
the bready, doughy quality on there from the floor, from that yeast. There's also so many bright orchard fruits, apples, citrus, but like candied citrus, dried citrus peel, orange peel. There's so much going on, dried flowers. Brininess as well, again, there is that proximity to the sea. You'll see even more coastal influence in the Manzanilla style, that sea spray, that brine, but you do get a little bit of it in here. To me though, it's a little more like olive or pickle juice than sea spray or sea brine. It's just, there's so much going on to pick apart in this wine, which again, you don't need a huge glass of it. Packs a big punch and a small amount of liquid. Mm. I love sherry. I don't drink it enough. There is a little bit of oxidative notes in there because it still does get a little oxygen exposure. And by oxidative notes, I mean a kind of mushroomy quality, but not gross mushrooms, like yummy mushrooms. Yummy dried shiitake and morel mushrooms. And that finish just keeps going. Walnuts, almonds, getting those dried floral notes again, some herbs as well. It's amazing how much you can unpack in such a small amount of wine. And again, that's why th these wines are meant to be with food. It might taste really weird to you at first, but have this with food. This wine is meant to be the variety of different things. This is great with fried foods, great with potatoes. So in Spain, they have patatas bravas, these little crispy potatoes that you can dip in aioli. It's gonna be great with olives, with some poultry dishes. Sherry and tapas are meant to be together. So a really fun thing you could do, get some fino, get some other styles that they also have available, Trader Joe's. Bring a bunch of tapas, have your friends come over, bring some little dishes and explore and taste. Talk about what you like the most. And then please let me know what you think. It's an experience, I know. It's completely new, completely weird, completely strange compared to your regular wines. But it's also really special. And the more you taste it, and the more you taste it with food, I think the more you're gonna fall in love with it, just like I and many other people have. So let us know what you think. And until next time, Keep exploring and keep trying new wines. Cheers.